Welcome to Recalculating Small Business. Like its award-winning book, Recalculating is dedicated to small business in America. Your hosts are Don Mazella and Dan Perkins. Don Mazella is the editor-in-chief of the Small Business Digest. Dan Perkins is a registered investment advisor with 43 years experience in managing money. Dan Perkins here, your co-host along with Don Mazella of Recalculating for Small Business. Our radio program is dedicated to you, helping the small business owners increase their profits. We draw our name from Recalculating, voted the best small business book of 2017 by the Independent Press. In this book, it features ways to grow your small business. Now, here's Don Mazzella. Dan, the recent judicial decision denying health insurers compensatory payments under Obamacare has put greater strain on the healthcare industry. This is going to especially impact small businesses already reeling from higher premiums and are frightened as the 2019 plan year uh, purchasing period nears. Sally Poblite is CEO of Wealthy, a leading provider of next generation technology solutions to help brokers and insurance carriers. Sally, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being here. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself first, and then uh, then about your company. Sure thing. So um, I have been uh, in the healthcare and health insurance industry for uh, my uh, most of my career. Half of that uh, in health insurance. So have. over uh, a decade of experience in insurance um, and working with um, small businesses, insurance companies, brokers, and the entire um, uh, ecosystem uh, to help uh, people navigate uh, uh, and simplify uh, their insurance choices. Hmm. And, And what does your company exactly do? Yeah, uh, so we are a technology company, and we uh, that is uh, simplifying the way that um, small businesses in particular uh, can find uh, their health insurance. Uh, we work with uh, the industry uh, providers, insurance companies, as well as uh, uh, brokers to connect uh, essentially an ecosystem of the small businesses, the carriers, and uh, the uh, licensed expert brokers to uh essentially facilitate and simplify the way in which, um, again, small businesses can access uh, 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 cost-effective coverage. Okay, but you spell your company, uh, uh, it's called Wealthy, but it's spelled. Will you spell it out for our audience? Uh, It's W-E-L-L-T-H-I-E. Uh, and it's wealthy. It sounds uh, just like uh, the aspiration of uh, most of the small businesses, and that's um, uh, you know seeking you know obviously obviously financial wellness, but at the same time it is also uh, talking about the the word well uh, as in wellness for for our health. So it's wealthy. W e a l t h i e dot com. Correct? It's W E L L T H I E dot com. Okay. Um, I have a lot of questions for you, but I, I guess the first one, uh, as a, every small business that I talk to says, uh, uh, after salaries, their number one expense is health care, and the, they seem all seem angry at the, at the the cost of what health care, which President Obama promised us would be reduced, have uh, gone through the uh, ceiling. Why is that? Uh, and let's stick with the small business marketplace first. And how does your company uh, help smaller businesses reduce those costs or contain them? Yeah, so uh, first of all, I think to, to want to just recognize that, that indeed uh, small businesses are always uh, trying to do right by their employees and do the best that they can to um, Sally, provide I'm, them support. Sally, Sally, I'm going to interrupt you for one second. Speak a little slower. We're on radio, and people need the time to catch up with you and me. The toughest thing I've ever learned is to talk slower. Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, so uh, I, I think that you're absolutely right in, um, you know, stating that small businesses are, uh, first of all, really focused on um, their employees' well-being and providing, uh, and health care is a very big component of 
that well-being. So naturally, small businesses really care about um, about the cost of insurance and, and providing health care to their employees as it is a very big um, line item in their budget. So, um, you know, I, I, I can only speak for um, the the fact that um, the industry certainly offers a wide array of insurance products um, to uh, the small businesses. Um, not a, a political expert here by any means, or want to comment on 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 that. But uh, certainly there are a wide array of options, um, and I'm here to to share some of uh, some tips and tricks, if you will, for the small businesses to just try to understand and navigate what is available to them and how they can um, ensure that the products, uh, insurance products that they um, have access to are, are you know, the, the right for their company and right for their budget. Well, uh, at that point, I'm going to turn it over to Dan. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, go back just just a little bit. Uh, Sally, because I, um, we we just had an interview with a gentleman who was a consultant who talks about disruption in American business and the economy and and how we as individuals and businesses deal with those disruptions. Um, and I understand you don't want to be political. I understand that. But as a business person, myself and Don, a small business people. I think that what happened as a result of Obamacare may have possibly irreparably damaged the healthcare system and, and put enormous additional expense in corporations and individuals that didn't need to happen. And what we're trying to do is figure out how do you unwind it? How do you make healthcare affordable? Um, and it's really uh, uh, you have must have a Herculean job because the we're as Don said we're not that too far away from the new premium resets and they at least initially don't sound like they're going to be good for those that are still left with Obamacare but the the idea that the American people thought they were getting a better deal which turned out to be a nightmare for many of them and small businesses. How do you unwind the mess that Washington created and, and provide your clients with, for themselves and for the employees, affordable care? Yeah, uh, Don, so, of course, I, I uh, again, not, not having all of the uh, um, uh, power of, of Washington within the, the hands of a tech company, our focus is to provide and illuminate um, choices and information for the small business owners um, so that when they shop for coverage, they understand exactly um, what what their options are and how to navigate them. Um, so, you know, one of the, the aspects um, that we provide is, is to create a essentially a marketplace where we have, uh, we, we list um, uh, thousands and thousands of insurance products from hundreds of carriers across the country so that small businesses can shop and can um, find uh, various options that meet their budget um, and uh, be able to um, understand uh, additionally what the different the differences are between various plans, uh, either those that are um, currently available as fully insured plans or if there are any other kinds of plans new that are maybe coming down the pike. They're not uh, available yet, but new plans that may be coming down the pike with new regulations so that small businesses are fully informed of um, uh, what their options are as they shop for insurance. Um, but certainly, uh, yeah, I, I, we didn't sign up for uh, being the ones to lower health care costs. So, of course, that is uh, a big uh, effort that requires um, uh, insurance companies, providers, the government, and the, our entire kind of system and our entire, um, all of the different stakeholders to work together. And there's some people, Dolly, who think that, <clears throat> that, uh, Going back to our previous guest, one of the disruptions that came out of 
the debacle with Obamacare is the, the actual number of insurance companies providing benefits is diminishing. And then we have, we have the, 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 the drug stores looking to buy major insurance companies. And so there's going to be a whole different environment in which we're going to operate in when non-traditional insurance companies are going to wind up owning insurance companies and with a different, totally different motivation. So what do you, what do you say about product innovation in a time when there's contraction in the industry? Yeah, I, I actually think that um, uh, this kind of uh, disruption as in different players um, outside of the industry partnering up, in some cases buying, um, I think that they can have some positive effects. Um, the positive effects are that we have some new input, new ideas, um, new learnings from other um, complicated industries like financial services, for example, or retail um, that really permeates um, um, a lot of our, right, the way in which we, we um, uh, our economy moves today. So I actually think that as long as there are healthcare experts, Partnering up um, responsibly and with with non healthcare experts to come up with new solutions for our industry. I think that that can actually bring some, as I said, some new ideas and uh, new solutions that um, could could benefit us all. So I, I don't think it's all bad. Um, there's certainly um, skepticism from you know ensuring that um, you know the kinds of products that get developed are obviously ones that are. Uh, have good coverage and they're not right junk insurance they're they're good products that um are good for for the end customer um but but I do think there's uh, also good good opportunity given the regulatory environment for insurance being a state basis as opposed to federal uh the idea that innovation may take place in one state but because it's not a international or national business are subject to national regulation. Uh, some states may approve it and other states may not approve it. And so we have a situation where uh, a new product might get developed, but it's not available everywhere. Uh, does the, if the industry needs to be re redesigned, what about the regulatory environment? Does it need to be redesigned? Um, well, that, that's a, uh, another uh, great question that kind of goes back to the beginning. I mean, I think there's a school of thought that um, e you know each state uh, each state uh, uh, has uh, its own uh, uniqueness of the population, and that that particular state can uh, best determine the needs of uh, the needs of their constituents, um, and and that all gets reflected in regulatory policy. And um, to your earlier point, a lot of what has been done uh, in the past has been to create more uniformity across regulations uh, in the industry, and we're seeing opposition to that as well. So um, I think the balancing act is that there um, are some, you know, some uh, general principles that can be can be unified or can be consistent across the country, with some uh, leeway for for states to to do um, you know to make some tweaks for their own population. Um, but but to your point, is there uh, is it possible in New York, in New York where I'm uh, currently sitting? There's a a whole lot of differences in in the way New York insurance works as opposed to say you know Ohio or 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 Florida. Yeah. So let's let's go back to your business. Um, um, why should I call you, and what can you do for me? Uh, great, great question. So, as the process right now for a small business who wants to purchase insurance, they typically call a broker, uh, and then that broker presents them with, um, you know, a, a bunch of options from which to buy their uh, their coverage, and uh, how wealthy helps the process is 
by creating a digital or online experience to do that, um, to to help a small business owner understand all of their options, helps them browse, helps them really do some of the research ahead of time and ensure that um, they're making um, fully informed decisions um, while still having the access to a licensed expert broker uh, before they actually uh, uh, go ahead and make the final decision. So it is all about providing um, information and transparency as well as good choices for the small business owner as they embark upon a a very important uh, task of uh, selecting benefits for their employees. So would would your services be typically provided to the broker as opposed to the ultimate consumer? Uh, we're, uh, we actually have, uh, we're working with carriers, we work with brokers, and very soon we're going to be um, also sharing um, a lot of our uh, direct uh, technology to employers uh, to give them that, that opportunity. So you, you uh, um, a regular person, not a, not a business, doesn't deal with you, they have to go through their broker. Um, what what uh, a regular small business owner can do is actually reach out to us on our website, and we can uh, direct them to uh, a way for them to to see some of the information and and also connect them to a licensed expert. And while we're at it, what's uh, what's your website again? Sure, it is w e l l t h i e dot com, and they can just click on contact us, and we're happy to help. What what is the uh, uh, what is the insurance product that seems to be getting the most questions, the most activity for businesses, including small business? What are they What are they most interested in? Uh, yeah, well, it runs the gamut, uh, Don. It runs the gamut. Uh, so these are fully insured products that are, uh, you know, have been available uh, in the market, and there are uh, different types of, uh, you know, uh, levels um, to them, as well as different kinds of networks mm-hmm. that are available to them. I think uh, if mo- the the biggest question um, is really about. Um, mm-hmm the cost effectiveness of the plan. So the businesses are always asking the question, you know, given the employee population that I have, what are some of the ways that I can save money? So that and, could be selecting, you know, uh, plans that um, offer different kinds of coverages, uh, plans that may cov- cover doctors outside of their state versus only in-state, ways to tweak how much money to put in or contribute to their employees' policy so that they can really save money. So it's it's um, really about, um, because there's interest in all kinds of products depending on the type of business, um, but it's re- the questions are really surrounding how, how do I make the best decisions given my, my budget as well as the profile of my employees. So is there a particular product that's hot at the moment that people seem to be very interested in? Um, well, I would say there are uh, products that have um, networks uh, of doctors that are more local, uh, localized or, or uh, narrower, I'll say, um, that there's uh, basically a subset of doctors that are um, high-performing doctors that those employees, uh, employers and employees could go to. Those products usually come at a lower premium than um a wide open network whereby the employer and employees can go to any doctor or any doctor anytime. Um, so having a narrower network or a network of, of smaller number of physicians um, sometimes uh, works to help lower the cost. So those have been um, have been uh, a good option to look at for a small business owner, particularly when. The employees are are you know defined in a particular geographic area. Okay, and is your service available across the country? Uh, for the most part, yes, yes, across the country. Okay. Don, back to you. Uh, we're waiting on Don. Let me ask you one other thing: Do you do anything in health savings accounts? Uh, yes, many of the plans that uh, are available uh, are also eligible to be paired. With health savings accounts, so uh, so yes, those are uh, plans that or uh, or vehicles, financial vehicles that we hi- highly recommend. It's really a good option 
for this employer and the employee to use to put aside some uh, dollars, and it's a means uh, f uh, for everyone to save tax-free on healthcare expenses uh, in the future. Um, some plans are also able to be paired with health reimbursement accounts uh, that are also, again, plans that uh, that are uh, more controlled by the employer. However, uh, those funds can be used to help uh, uh, purchase, uh, uh, help offset some of the costs for purchasing coverage. So the idea of, of marrying health savings accounts and other packages is a way for an employer to get some control over their health insurance costs. Absolutely. I think that that's a great way. And, um, um, uh, and again, also selecting the right level of coverage as well as the um, contribution amount. So employers don't often have to contribute 100% of the premium. They may contribute, uh, I think the average right now is around uh, 80, 85%. So, and there are even some employees who contribute less to their um, coverage, to their employees' coverage. So tweaking some of those levers are, are some of the ways that the employee, employers can, can try to you know, stretch their dollars. Um, I'm going to ask you one more, and then I'll turn it back to Don. Um, I'm curious about the young people. Um, there was a, 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 a resurgence of information and stories about catastrophic illness and high deductible uh, and, and disability insurance replacing a more traditional uh, in-hospital situation. Did that ever get it off the ground? Um, well, there are uh, uh, policies that are more catastrophic in nature, and there are policies that can be purchased right now that are focused on critical illness um, type of policies. Um, so they're, they're very um, um, specific types of coverages. Um, I think it's important to note that they're different from right major medical and that major medical covers things like preventive care and other uh, routine visits to the doctor um, in addition to um, hospital stays and other kinds of coverages. So um, the high, the, the, the trend, as, as uh, you, you may know and your, your, your um, listeners uh, are familiar with this, the increasing um, level of deductibles uh, uh, that, that have been occurring um, to try to reduce the premium. So um, those major medical plans um, can actually be paired with some plans like critical illness and other policies that help to offset uh, the deductible. Good. Thank you. Don, back to you. Well, thank you. Um, you know, uh, Sally, uh, your website again, uh, spell it out and tell people how they can reach you. Sure. They uh, uh, Small businesses can come to uh, wealthy.com. That's W-E-L-L-T-H-I-E.com. We're, we're, we're uh, talking with uh, Sally Pobliti. Pobliti. I always get that T wrong. But uh, thank you um, for being with us. Uh, my understanding is that um, the average deductible is now approaching $5,000. Um, and that if you uh, uh, compare that with an HSA, it's, it's almost like a no-brainer uh, with a $5,000 deductible uh, to uh, tie it into a um, HSA. Am I wrong in that, uh, Sally? Uh, no, you're you're not wrong in that. I think uh, um, a high deductible, the, the, the amount of deductibles has been um, increasing over time, and um, uh, yeah, a health savings account, as I said, is a, um, a really a great vehicle to help the employer and the employee save. Uh, one of the advantages of health savings accounts is that it is um, um, tax-free to to be, you know, when you when the employer um, contributes or when the employee sets aside money, and uh, it it um, carries over year after year so that any unused amount um, this year can be carried over the following year, and um, it's a great way, to, a great vehicle to, to save some dollars for those uh, premiums or medical expenses, those deductibles, you know, pharmacy costs, et cetera, that, um, that we all have to spend uh, money on. Well, uh, I, 
I haven't uh, written a book on HSA, so uh, I'm a, uh, I'm a great uh, believer in them. But let's go, let me ask a different question. The U.S. Uh, uh, also deal with people uh, with companies that uh, want to self-insure. Um, yeah, well, so we connect with um, experts in that. So at this at this point, our our platform that's a a future development that we're going to be adding into our system. But it is, uh, uh, and we're really excited about it. Um, so self insurance uh, for for the uh, listeners who um, are not very familiar um, has been a trend uh, with large corporations uh, in the past, where a large Fortune 500 company may uh, instead of you know buying uh, fully insured coverage for every one of their thousands of employees, they just go ahead and pay for um, the healthcare expenses of their um, their employees. So this trend that has been available mostly in larger corporations is starting to come downstream to smaller organizations um, as uh, another cost saving uh, mechanism. Uh, um, <clears throat> what the, the implication of that is that uh, any uh, so there are certain carriers that are starting to offer uh self-funded types of plans um but they are subject to underwriting meaning that's not a guarantee that uh you might qualify for a self-funded plan and uh really a, a particular kind of um you know a population so uh, an empl- uh, insurance company kind of evaluates the profile of a a group and some groups are better off than others in purchasing self-funded plans. Uh so so that's uh, one thing to consider. So not everyone it's it's not good for everybody, but um um a, a kind of a younger uh, I'll just say design design firm or a uh um uh, may be able to to save save a few dollars from from uh, going self-insured and as I said, there's a number of carriers that are starting to offer them. Yeah, and it also varies by state. But my understanding is That's that correct. a lot of the mm-hmm. uh, the so-called new companies, digital companies, et cetera, are, are really uh, uh, glomming onto it because of, they essentially have very young uh, groups, young employees, uh, uh, and hence uh, uh, relatively um, uh, uh, sickness-free compared to older companies. Uh, have you found that to be the f- case? Um, I think that there there's some um, uh, some of those options available. There's also opportunities to join professional employer organizations, or PEOs uh, uh, are what they call them, um, that also uh, enable a small business to purchase coverage um, like they were part of a larger group, uh, thereby spreading the risk with more people. So there are th- there's that opportunity as well. Um, so with all of these, I think the the key is that um, um, helping the small business understand again if if uh, uh, what state they're in, the number of employees they have, the budget they have, and the kind of coverage that they want to offer, um, uh, we can help them kind of direct them to a, uh, uh, the right option for them. Sally, unfortunately, we've run out of time. I wanted to throw it back to Dan for one last question, but we've run out of time. Your website again for, for our uh, listeners and how they can reach you? Sure. It is uh, wealthy.com. That's W-E-L-L-T-H-I-E.com. So you, you you really demonstrated an encyclopedian knowledge of the healthcare industry. Thank you so much. Uh, a link Thank to you. her website will be on recalculating dot biz tonight, where you can hear this and every other recalculating program. And you can also take a brief survey and tell us guests you'd like to hear on future programs. Sally, thank you so much for being with us. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Want to know more about health savings accounts for your company or yourself? Go to 2hsa.com and get a free employer's primer. Health savings accounts are a cost-effective way of offering health care benefits to your employees and yourself. HSAs build retirement funds for your employees, improve morale, and reduce your health care benefit costs. For a free employer guide to HSAs, go to 2hsa.com. That's 
2hsa.com. Dan Perkins here from Recalculating.biz with your featured book. I want to tell you about a recent interview I had with Bob Bethel, a turnaround specialist with lots of success in small business. Bob's new book is Strengthen Your Business, Fail-Proof Strategies for Small Business. He tells us of his life successes and failures that have made him and his clients so successful. Over the years, Bob has brought 77 companies back from the brink and changed them into thriving, profitable businesses. His energy is amazing, and at 74, he proves that you can still have a great deal to give others if you just try. His suggestions are easy to understand and very helpful. One insight struck me was that most companies do not have a plan. The old Chinese proverb says, if you don't know where you're going, then any road will take you there, is true today. Bob Beth Bethel's book, Strengthen Your Business, can be found at Amazon.com or can be ordered at your local bookstore. This has been Dan Perkins with your Recalculating.biz featured book. Marcus Limonis, J.D. Powers, and John Scully, and a hundred other presidents and experts contributed to Recalculating the Book. Why did all these people agree to contribute to the book? I'm Don Mazzella, and I'm the Editorial Director of Small Business Digest. And for 20 years, we have been offering small business leaders information and data to increase profits. Recalculating the book was named the best small business book by the Independent Press Association. Whether you need help with marketing, staffing, finance, operations, technology, or many other subjects. They're all here in recalculating the book. They're now available at Amazon at a reduced cost. We've also created the radio program Recalculating on Recalculating.biz. Then Todd Swickard leads Smart One Marketing that has a new interface allowing small businesses and for that matter any company to drag and drop elements to create striking websites. Todd, welcome to the program. Thank you. Well, we're happy to have you. And Todd, before uh-huh. we do anything, else, tell us a little bit about your personal background or how you came to Smart One Marketing. Sure. So we started Smart One Marketing in 2009 um, as an agency. Um, but before that, I was uh, one of the first 100 folks in uh, a little company called autoconnect.com. Um, it transformed quickly into uh, autotrader.com. Uh, left that as a startup and uh, went to another company called earthcars.net up in Burlington, Vermont. It's, it's now as uh, we've helped, tra- I helped transition that as the national director of sales for a comp- to uh, dealer.com. Um, uh, after that startup, left to do my own startup, um, which was uh, uh, a site that was called People to My Site. Um, it's, uh, about nine years ago, um, I sold it, um, but we worked with the 700 franchise car dealers across the country, um, looking for easy solutions, both for web, um, we would do their, uh, Google AdWords it was one of the first 100 folks certified in, in Google AdWords in the country. And we came up with programs at that time where we were really excited about three, $400 that dealers would spend on digital advertising. Um, so uh, left that and started uh, 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 Smart One Marketing in 2009. Uh, worked with a, a publisher friend of mine that had me come in and do some consulting after I sold the last agency and realized that uh, uh, publishers and radio folks and broadcast folks uh, across the country um, really needed some help putting together what they're calling now their digital arm or their digital agency. So we now service about uh, 42 different markets across the country where um, if a radio station, a TV station, um, a, a, a newspaper, um, a biweekly magazine um, would sell you digital, we're actually the fulfillment house for that. So that's how we kind of ended up here. But uh, the the programs or some of the things that we're just getting ready to roll out is, is targeted really towards the smaller SMBs out there that both have been basically serviced by yellow pages um, and not been what we call serviced, but uh, more delivered a bill of goods. And we want to give them uh, something that helps them compete um, 
very economically with some of the larger players that are out there and, and helping them understand as digital shifts um, more in their business. Now they have an opportunity and a gateway to to really start to look like the big boys and actually do more things than, than they've ever dreamed of. Um, but as a small business, you're always limited on time, um, money, and resources. So if we can help them with that project and help them with that um, strategy, um, we're, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for them. And that's that's how Smart One Marketing has uh, come along, um, but they keep on telling me, um, you know, it's been about 19 years since I started uh, in the industry, so I'm uh, the old guy in the business, um, but we're still trying to find a way to, um, you know, come out with those technologies that are as new as anybody else, um, or stronger than anybody else, but we have an understanding of business knowledge, not just uh, the technology. Wow. Um uh, I want to go uh, and talk about to your uh, website, uh, w- uh, web offering. But before you do, uh-huh. I'd like to uh, clarify. So you work with newspapers, radios, and TV stations as the front end of their uh, 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 digital experience? Did I hear that right? Yes. Yes. So, so, so. as 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 those traditional medias are transitioning into more of a a digital landscape, um, we're able to help both the stations itself and the publishers um, that have the the news um, online and how to monetize that, but also how to assist their customers with a detailed strategic plan to actually push forward and, you know, help them as a trusted partner um, to give them a, a quality offering that is not something that they're going to, you know, uh, that they can see actual results on and actually returns on. Well, we would def- Dan and I definitely would like to talk to you after the show about some mm-hmm. other things, but let us uh, n- uh, now concentrate. So I'm a small mm-hmm. business. I, I, I go to your website, uh, which is? Um, we have uh, a multitude of them now. For the small business web product, it's Smart One Sites, um, S-M-A-R-T, number one, S-I-T-E-S dot com. Um, Smart One Sites is uh, a builder that we found um, a technology that we acquired uh, here uh, at the end of last year. And it gives uh, small businesses a way to build a site rapidly, um, build a site that gives them everything they want in a fully functional web builder, but dumbs it down so they don't have to try to figure out, you know, all these complicated things or hire a a guy to code everything, Um, but gives them the animation and ability to play video backgrounds and ability to change fonts and specials on the fly um, without having to contact their webmaster or hire a guy internally to do it. Um, we have plans to start at $19 a month, or we can uh, we have what we call do-it-yourself plans, or we have managed plans. So our team of experts can actually help them, um, and we give them one hour a month of basically let us help fix, or you know, hey, you're trying to do this, but you don't have time. Um, just submit a ticket to us, and we'll, we'll take care of it for you. Wow, that sounds exciting. I'm going to ask one qu- more quick question, then mm-hmm. turn it over to you. Can you also mm-hmm. uh, uh, create um, um, uh, email addresses and uh, other material off of these sites? Um, we can actually uh, create. So what we'll usually do is um, on well, – there's it's kind of a, a two-part question. <laughs> the first part is can you create an email address from the sites? Yes, you can. Um, we're a, a partner with Google for their G Suite. Um, we highly recommend the, the G Suite product, um, and it's it's very simple to sign up and, and get an email address. Um, it's five dollars a month, and you get you know I think it's now up to a hundred megabytes of storage, and you get a lot of uh, I'm sorry, hundred gigabytes of storage. Um, it's very simple. It's very easy. You can use it for. Um, all your Gmail logins, um, we found that much more effective um, than, you know, some of the GoDaddies or the web.coms of the world that try to sell you, 
you know, a, a five dollar email address that doesn't give you half the the services that you would get with Gmail. Um, so we can, you know, it's 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 your your email address, your domain name, you know, uh, sales at xyzcompany dot com. But we can put that up there and and guide you through that process, or even transition an old email address over to it. Um, for safety and concerns, you know, there's nobody better than Google that that tries to to stay up with that. Um, you don't get bumped all the time for upgrades and and outages. Um, you know, if Google goes down, there's usually something pretty big going on in the world um, instead of that. Um, with the newsletter side of it. Um, we work with uh, companies, so if you have a small newsletter or just a simple newsletter, um, you can actually run that through the site and, and blast out to your members. Um, or uh, we'll actually hook you up with any one of the major services. Um, we usually recommend MailChimp or MyEmma as a, as a service. Um, those guys keep you whitelisted and compliant um and, and makes it really simple for um an integration within our site. We, it takes about two minutes to actually pull that over to the site so that way anytime somebody signs up for your newsletter it automatically goes in um and gives you a full email editor, you know, read reports and and, and consolidates all those things a whole lot easier for you. But to get your question done, I guess yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um now uh, Dan I'm gonna turn it over to you. <clears throat> All right, sir. Todd, uh, you mentioned several different websites, but if, 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 I were, if I wanted to get a good sense of what you can do for me, where would I, where mm-hmm. would I go first? Well, the, the crux of any um, site that we, you know, any, any digital strategy that you want to start off with is you want to have a good base. It's just like a um, foundation that you build for your house. Um, right. Whether you're building in Arizona or whether you're building in, you know, uh, Burlington, Vermont, you want a strong foundation. You want that to be on solid ground. To get that on solid ground, you need a website. Um, you know, if, if when we always say, you know, step one is is making sure that um, your website's easy to navigate, um, easy to find information, easy to find your phone number, your contact information, mm-hmm. which is what a lot of folks actually go out there to do. Um, they want to find that um, and, and build that up. We can take an existing site. We can take, you know, a, a rip off Yellow Pages site. I'm a little biased towards this because they've they've so ruined part of this industry. Um, but you know, we can build a site so people can contact you. They can find out your services. They know your hours of operation. Um, you know, let's block and tackle is you know on the football fan. So. You know, before you can block and tackle, you gotta have the ability to do that before you can run trick plays. And so, what um, you know, uh, anybody, what website? Mm-hmm. What which one of your websites? Would be, we, look at first? It, uh, we would suggest you always start with Smart One Sites. Um, we are always happy to to help you out there on Smart One Sites and get you get you started with that. Um, is that Smart One dot com? Uh, that is no, that's Smart One Sites dot com. So S M A R T number, number one. The, I'm sorry. The number. It's, yep. The number one or one. Is it word one. Um, it actually works with both, but the number one will get you there a lot faster. Smart one mm-hmm. sites. S i t e s dot com. Dot com. Yes. Okay. Super. Mm-hmm. Now let's. Um, so you're you started on the automotive side, and you said in your mm-hmm. conversation with Don that you did a lot of do a lot of work with radio and TV stations basically create helping them create a digital footprint. Mm-hmm. And we know that a lot of radio and television stations around the country are mm-hmm. dramatically expanding their streaming through the use of the internet. They're making their program right. available anywhere in the country by creating a, a web on their website for their station, the ability to hear live broadcast, to go back into archives and see what's going on. Uh, are those the kinds of services that you provide? That's one of the, the strategy that we provide for them. Um, mm-hmm. You know, within their own digital footprint, we will look and, and create you know, where's, 
where's your strong suits? What are you doing to, to monetize the video? What are you doing to monetize your content that you have out there? Um, everybody wants it localized. Um, you know, the, the, a lot of the regional players are, are competing with a lot of, uh, you know, news functions that are out there. Um, you know, people get their, their sources from everything from Facebook to sometimes the, the RSS feeds that they want and, and kind of pick and choose. So the strategy is how do we make sure that you're one of the most popular ones? And then when they do come to your site or listen to your story, how, how are we making sure that that's monetized? Um, so you're always a, mm-hmm. one of your services is then uh, helping them move up the food chain of the, of the Google uh, recognizing mm-hmm. spaces. Yes. Okay. Right. And, and how do you, how do you charge? Is it a flat dollar amount or is it per fee per, per service or how is it? Um, so when it comes to our publishers, a lot of them are actually, um, you know, we don't like to be called a, a vendor, um, but we'd rather be like to be called a partner. Um, and a lot of our, our publishers and uh, broadcasters that we work with, um, their sales team also resells our services um, to uh, their their current client base. So we're a proxy for them. Um, so say they go to a window company and, and they're running a um, – a uh, campaign for uh, new replacement windows. Um, they'll put together an on-air strategy, but uh, we help them also put together a digital strategy that helps back up um, that on-air strategy. So the sellers will sell two parts of it. When it comes to working with publishers and broadcasters, um, again, most of them are our partners that, that sell our suite of services. Um, but we've also worked with independents um, that may not have a sales team. And when we work with them, uh, what we do is kind of evaluate and, you know, lay down, uh, here's the, the landscape that you're facing. Here's the, here's the obstacles, you know, in your competition that's a lot of times much more further advanced. Um, how do we, how do we compete with them on, on a regional basis, local basis, national basis, whatever it might be. And we just kind of evaluate that on a case by case basis. And then we charge a flat consulting fee. Um, so your success is, is our success over time. Um, and a lot of times we'll, we'll set milestones of, you know, Hey, once we reach here, you know, we may get a bonus for something of, you know, because now we look at it from a monetization standpoint. So you don't make, if you don't make any money, we don't make any money on that side of it. So uh, I, that's, I have, that's our goal. Okay. Ty, I, I want to mm-hmm. ask you one more question, then I'm going to turn it over to Don. Sure. And I want to, I want mm-hmm. to use myself as a Guinea pig for probably mm-hmm. a lot of people that are listening to this program. Um, when I first decided I wanted to have a web presence, everybody was telling me, go to GoDaddy, go to GoDaddy. And mm. they have all these templates and all these things. And I found it enormously frustrating working with their mm-hmm. templates because if I wanted to put something in another place, couldn't do it. It had to go in the box that was pre-described. And mm-hmm. I, had to, I had to fit everything into their format. So I want to, mm-hmm. I want to make sure that what I was hearing from you was there's a lot more flexibility in in custom designing your website and putting what you want where you want it is that true um it's that was that was one of the reasons why it took two years to find the technology that we wanted um the when we deal with customers just like yourself um you know a lot of people have said you know go to godaddy go to web.com go to you know, there's, there's 12 of them out there, Weebly, um, and, and here's the template, and, and you got to try to squeeze your information into to where you want or where they want. Um, we never believed in that philosophy because, you know, your, your, your business, your website is your online calling card. It's the first impression a customer sees of you. So if you're, you know, smashed into something that doesn't give you a lot of flexibility – or as, as you continue to grow and say you want to put within your website some, you know, script in there that has, uh, um, you know, the ability to look up a podcast library, um, you've been very limited in the past. Um, our technology 
says, do you know what? You can go as simple as you want, but as it grows, it grows with you. And, and the, one of the reasons why we're so excited about this new product is the GoDaddy's, the Webs, the Weebly's, the, you know, uh, there's 10 other ones that are out there. They have a legacy platform. So when they upgrade it, they have to try to upgrade and, and break everybody else um, or charge you more money to do that. Our system allows you to start off small, figure out what you want, as you need more, you're able to add it in. There's no uh, hidden charges. There's no extra fees. Um, you can do it yourself. You can have your, you know, your 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 16 year old uh, nephew do it for you, or you can call us and we can do it for 30 bucks. Yeah. Um, so it's it's not that pain and suffering. Um, you know, our, our goal is to have you as a a lifetime client where we can continue to help you and continue to grow because. Yeah. As your website successful, you're going to want to advertise it, and we have products for that. As you know, we're able to see some of the information. We can, you know, our our team can analyze it and say, you know what, these guys are trying to sell you a bill of goods, and it's it's not going to work for you. So yeah. you know, we have no long term commitments. Um, you know, you can try the site for free for 15 days if you if you run into problems or if you see some of the stuff that you have out there. Um, by the end of the year, currently we have about a 180 templates, I think, that are on the site. Um, by the end of the year, we're going to have well over 1,200 um, templates that are on the site, and they're they're really we don't like calling them templates. Um, we we like calling them themes um, because now one of the things when we really dug in and, and started to question SMBs, you know, they're like, it's not that I don't know what I want on my website. I don't know how to explain it to you. So if we can give you choices of different themes that you can look at, explore, and go, do you know what, I like this, and I like this, and I like this, and we're going to give you right behind that, hey, here's free clip art that you can go out and find, and it's geared towards your business. You don't have to try to figure it out, and you just click a button, and it's, it's going to pull some of the sample things that you want. Um, if you go to, you know, you want video, well, well you know what, we're, we've – We've acquired a um, a video library that we're we're continuously adding to. So if you want to run video in the background, you know you don't have to go out try to buy it, license it, figure out how to get it up on YouTube and 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 put it there. We've already taken care of all that. So the licensing is is all done for you. Um, you know the thing that we start to realize with SMBs is all of a sudden they can have you know 15 different elements that they've bought from multiple different companies. They can't keep track of it. They don't, they forget to renew it. They forget to, to do things because they're actually trying to run their business, not their website. And right. so if we can simplify those things um, and bring that down to it's simplified, it's flexible and it's affordable um, because a lot of these things that we've talked about before, instead of the $19 starting mark was, um, you know, $99, or we've even seen it as $199 is the, 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 the watershed on that. And we're like, you know what, a, a guy that's doing a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, that's a lot of money for him. You know, $2,400 is a huge amount, of, if not all of his budget. So right. how do we make this affordable um, but yeah. still make it flexible? So um, let, me, let me ask one more question, then an observation, and I'll give it back to Tom real quick. Can you can you help a, a a listener of our program get a domain name? Oh yeah, not a problem. Okay, so we're a, we're a, you know when it comes to that we still buy them from GoDaddy. I mean the GoDaddy has the interface. Um, you know we'll buy it for them, set up the account, and and you know they can do two things: they can run it through us, and we'll automatically take care of it um, if they have any questions, or we can just you know uh, create a sub account. They run the account. They're responsible for the, the renewals and everything else. Um, a lot of our customers like the fact that, you know, hey, you know what? Um, they've all gotten in trouble for, oh, I forgot to, you know, I get an email along with the 10,000 GoDaddy emails that I have um, of reminding me to renew my domain. Uh, right. we'll, we'll just take care of that for you. Okay. Um, so the, op the yeah. observation I would make, Todd, is before I give it back to, to Don, we, I don't know, we may have done – 200, 250 interviews. Um, this is the first time we've really come across somebody that 
I think is a is is a just a term, can be a tremendous tool for our small business people about giving them an opportunity to have a quality website on an affordable basis. Uh, as Don said, we'd love to talk to you about how we can we can partner with you. With that, back to Don. Mm-hmm. Well, it's fascinating. Uh, we're talking with Todd Swicker. I'm sitting here uh, just amazed by I've been in this space for over 20 years in the, in the small business space. And it, it's just amazing how, how far things have come and how far they have to go. I have one more question. Unfortunately, we'll run out of time. So, uh, Dan, mm-hmm. you're not going to get a chance for a final question. I'm, okay. I'm going to have it, which is, um, okay, I have a site. And at some point, I decide um, I want to move my site. Uh, uh-huh. Do I, ha- in fact, have to build another site, or can can I move your site into, let's say, I have my own uh, computer, or I I, I, I go further, um, I go, I'm acquired, etc. Is it easy to move sure. your site? Um, right now, we are uh, we're actually getting something. Um, that's that's always the trick. So it is a um, right now it runs off of our servers. Um, one of the things that we'll be rolling out in third quarter of this year is the ability to actually what we call pack that site up and move it to another um, server. Um, it'll actually go into a WordPress format. Um, so it'll automatically transfer over, and WordPress is pretty universal. Um, you know, any of any of the major hosting things can set you up a WordPress site. Um, the only thing that you'll lose is, is some of uh, the animations um, because that has to do with uh, uh, our site um, and the server that we have and the licensing agreements that we have. Um, but it'll become a flat site. So, you know, if you're ever mad at us, um, yeah, sure. You, you know, you can move that site and, and move that information um, however you want and we'll, you know, we right now we have it as a we can do it manually, um, but in the third quarter of this year we'll actually have a button that, hey, you want to leave us, um, you know, and and we're sorry to see you go. Um, hopefully because it's a a good reason that you got acquired or something, um, but you know you can take that site and, and go wherever you want. And again, you're not locked into that two year contract where we're just going to try to you know. Uh, it, strong army into paying money over and over again well uh, Todd it's been a, a extraordinary experience talking to you we have been talking with Todd Swickard a link to his website will be up tonight at recalculating.biz where you can hear all of our shows past and present you can also tell us via a quick survey what topics and ideas you would like recalculating to explore on Fortress future shows. Todd Swicker, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. You know, Dan, before we go any further, I, I want our audience to know about your new runaway hit book on uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease and how it affects teenagers. Please tell us about it. Yeah, Don, thank you. The book is called Why Can't Grammy Remember Me? Uh, it's a book written primarily for, for children ages 9 to 12 but really needs to be read by the entire family. Uh, And what I try to do is I try to take the the subject matter of dementia and the challenges uh, to a a different level in the form of a mystery story with my two little detectives, two little girls, Hudson and Charlotte. And uh, it it really creates a a breakthrough opportunity for small children and parents and families to begin understand the problem with dementia see don the the real challenge is that the children are the forgotten people mom and dad spend so much time working to try and take care of mom and dad they don't take the time to explain to the children what's going on in grandma or grandpa's brain so you can buy it at amazon.com and or you can order it through your local bookstore or any online bookstore besides amazon has it available why can't grammy remember me illustrations are spectacular a story by Dan Perkins. Your runaway bestseller, new book. Why Can't Grammy Remember Me by Dan Perkins. Thank you for being with us today. From Don Mazzella and Dan Perkins. Thank you for joining us on Recalculating. 
We hope the information you received on today's episode was helpful to you in starting and growing your business. Please go to our website, recalculating.biz, to contact us, to listen to past shows, and see special offers. Until next time, remember, if you grow, we grow. Join us next week for more helpful ideas to make your business a great success. Recalculating, a program designed to help you be successful 